What is the leaven of the Pharisees? Ask your pastor, what is the leaven of the Pharisees? Ask your camp leader, what is the leaven of the Pharisees? What is Jesus talking about? We know that he gave us further revelation in that the leaven of the Pharisees is false teaching, false doctrine. But why did he say leaven of the Pharisees? Why did God commanded the children of Israel not to eat bread with yeast? Huh? Who can answer that? Somebody answer that. Why did God prohibit the children of Israel from eating bread with leaven? These are the questions nobody has answers to. I will be going over that. I will be going over that. First off, let's deal with the children of Israel not allowed to eat leavened bread during the killing of the firstborn son in Egypt. Exodus chapter 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh. Now we know that Pharaoh is a type and shadow of Saul. King Saul, I call him, the wolf in sheep clothing, the apostate Paul. Yet will I bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence all together. Now this final plague is going to be the killing of the first Born. What is that? That's going to be the day that Jesus dies. The Quran boldly claims that the Jews and the Christians will not believe in Christ until after his death. Meaning this whole time they have not yet believed in him. Verse 5. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servants that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts. Now let's keep going. Let's go to chapter 12. And in chapter 12, we read in verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. Now let's get the warning for those who eat bread with leaven in it. Oh, Exodus 12 and 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Now seven days is a number of completion. Even the first day ye shall Put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eat of leaven bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So now we got to do a recap. The firstborn of Pharaoh is going into Jesus. Why Pharaoh? Because Paul is the one who introduced to us Christ dying for our sins. So Paul is Pharaoh and the firstborn is going to be Jesus when he comes and dies. And we see that they are not supposed to eat bread with leaven in it. Whoever eats bread with leaven in it will be cut off. It doesn't matter if you are a stranger. What is this going into? This is going into the teaching that Jesus rose from the grave, from the dead. Now think about leaven in the bread. You beat it, you bake it, it rises. This is why 
Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. The Pharisees believed that one man would die for the nation of Israel. This was a false teaching that Jesus rebuked. And we know Paul was the son of a Pharisee and he was a Pharisee. Now I'm going to get you the scripture that's going to prove that the Pharisees believed in one man dying for the nation of Israel. This is going to be John 11, 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. And that whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation. Now, what's strange about this is in the whole New Testament, there's not one mention of thus saith the Lord. So this right here was thus saith the Pharisee. This is what he spoke. Because we know that God Almighty is not introduced or mentioned by the thus saith the Lord or the word of the Lord has come to me or the Lord has spoken. None of that is in the entire New Testament. So this was the Pharisees belief system. They believed that one man should die for the nation of Israel. Verse 52. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad so this is going into the northern kingdom now i know christians might not agree with this but according to the bible he only came for the house of israel speaking of jesus he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of israel and this is the way the jews believe then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death so they believed in one man dying for the nation of Israel. Although this is totally contrary to the scriptures. God always made a man die for his own sins. They totally went against God's word. God's word was the son shall not die for the father and the father shall not die for the son. Every man is accountable for his own sins. This is seen in Ezekiel. It is called the way of the Lord and the disciples. They were disciples of the way. They knew what the way meant. The way of the Lord is every man is going to die for their sins. That's the way of the Lord. And so the Pharisees and the head Pharisee and the head high priest at that time, they had these funky beliefs that one man would die for the nation of Israel. And this is why Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Let that sink in. It's so sad that there's so many people who don't know the Bible that I have to be one of the first ones bringing this out, sounding all strange, but it's in the Bible. Answer those questions. Why did Jesus say, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees? And I'm going to get that for you. This is going to be Matthew chapter 16, verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, intempting, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Now, when you see the word Pharisees, you have to think of Paul. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left him 
and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. So in other words, he's saying, look, the son of man is going to be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. OK, now Jonah, he did not die in the belly of the whale. He did not die in Paul's belly. He did not die in the belly of the whale. He was alive. OK, and it's the same thing with Jesus. He did not die yet. There's coming a day when he's going to die, but he's going to take care of business first. And he's telling them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Let me keep going. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they have forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reason among themselves saying, is it because we have taken no bread? See, they were blind. They didn't get it when he told them, beware of the teachings of of the Pharisees. Why? Because the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they always hung together because they was always debating about the resurrection. The Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection, but the Pharisees did. But they had funky, twisted beliefs about one man dying for the nation of Israel. And this is where the beloved prophet John the Baptist got caught up in. That's why he told Jesus, behold, the lamb which take away the sins of the world. Why? Because he was caught up in that same belief system and he was beheaded just like Paul was beheaded. John the Baptist was a type and shadow of the Apostle Paul. They both were belts. They both were in the wilderness. They both were in prison. They both were in the relationship ministry. I go over this all the time. So now we need to get back to where I was at. Verse 7. And they reason among themselves saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith. Why? Because they did not catch it. Why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Do ye not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up how is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees now when you hear that word beware you need to watch out he's telling his disciples look there's a wolf coming in sheep clothing right around the corner. He's going to be coming and he's going to deceive. He's going to deceive you. He was telling them right then, watch out for Paul. Paul is coming. Paul is the Pharisee that believes in resurrection. He believes in one man dying for the nation of Israel. He was taught that by Gamaliel. He was taught that by Caiaphas. He and his father and all the Pharisees believed in a lamb, a human being, dying for the nation of Israel, which is totally against scripture. Totally. So now we're going to get back. Verse 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine. What is doctrine? Teaching. Teachings of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, we're going to get some scriptures confirming that Paul was a Pharisee. This is going to be Acts 23, 6. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other part was Pharisees, but when Paul perceived that one part was Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brother, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. Paul is being doubted right now about his funky belief system 
in Jesus dying for the nation of Israel. Okay, and he tells you he's a Pharisee and his father was a Pharisee. Now I want to show you more scripture on how Paul was a Pharisee. This is going to be Acts 26 and 5, which knew me from the beginning. If they would testify that after the most straightest sect or cult, Paul was in a cult. He is the leader of the cult in this major cult right now, which is called Christianity Paul is responsible for it along with the Pharisees. That's why Jesus always rebuked the Pharisees because the Pharisees were the wolf in sheep clothing. Christianity came from Israel. It came from the Pharisees. The Pharisees pushed out this funky religion that makes no sense. It is totally against God. It is totally against the books of Moses. Moses was vehemently against child sacrifice. He was totally against it. He was against them passing their sons and daughters through the fire. And here we have the Pharisees believing that one would come and die for their sins. Although some was in doubt because Jesus did not meet the other requirements they expected to be the Messiah. But they did believe in a lamb coming to die for the nation of Israel. Now I'm going to get you another scripture. Philippians 3 and 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. So... Now we see, we see that the wolf in sheep clothing is responsible for Christianity. He is the founder of it and he is the father of it. See 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15. Now I want to keep going. I want to show you some more connections. And first we want to do a recap on everything that we brought out. First you got to understand, God did not want the children of Israel Eating bread that rises when the firstborn of Egypt were killed. Why? He does not want you to believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. Didn't Jesus say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? Newsflash, bread represents books. Give us this day our daily bread. Y'all even have the pamphlets in Christianity. Daily breads. Those are going into books. And we know for a fact that God Almighty didn't want the children of Israel eating bread that rises. That is books that say Jesus died for your sins and rose from the grave. That is baloney. It is baloney. That is a lie. And that's why he told them to eat bread with no yeast, unleavened bread. And we see in Jeremiah, the children of Israel were very disobedient. They were baking cakes to the queen of heaven. They said, skip the unleavened bread. We baking cakes to the queen of heaven because ever since we've been baking cakes to the queen of heaven, days have been good. And that's exactly what you're saying with your crucifix and your Mary in Christianity. When Jeremiah came on the scene and he told them they would go into captivity and he was talking to that generation. Jeremiah did not judge Israel based on their father's sins. Jeremiah came on the scene and he gave that generation of that day an opportunity to repent and not go into Babylon and they could have remained in their own land, but they failed. God never judged the children of Israel based on what their fathers did. He stopped that. He stopped that. He never once allowed that to continue. And that's why he gave us Ezekiel chapter 18. 
When he tells us, you're not going to be able to quote this proverb no more. That the fathers have eaten ripe grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. You're not going to have any occasion anymore to bring that to me. Why? Because the soul that sins is the soul that is going to die. The righteous man is going to live by his righteousness and the wicked man is going to die according to his wickedness. So now, with that being established, we see that the bread that rises is going into the teaching that Jesus rose from the dead. And so now you see, according to the Bible, according to the Bible, Jesus used metaphors. He used metaphors. He wasn't talking about yeast. He was talking about bread that rises. And who came on the scene? Teaching more than Peter, more than John, more than all of the disciples that Jesus rose from the dead and died for our sins. Who taught that? That's Paul. Paul taught that. Now, I want to keep going and I want to bring out the scriptures in the Old Testament. This is going to be Exodus chapter 15. Verse 3, I love this scripture now that I understand it. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's carriers and his host have he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. So this is going into the teachings of Paul. They are drowned. In the words of Christ. The words of Christ is the Red Sea. This is why this was so popular. When Pharaoh was destroyed. And his hosts. And they all were sunk into the Red Sea. That was a picture of what was going to happen in the future. And that is the apostate Paul. His teachings. His religion. Will all be destroyed oh what a day and specifically when jesus christ comes back to the earth and the word of the lord is going to come to him a second time and he is going to destroy the cross he's going to destroy the very religion that paul created paul called himself the father of the christian church god didn't speak like that through jesus jesus spoke like this this is my father's house my father's house shall be called a house of prayer and the problem with understudied men is they don't understand that spiritually when a man has his father's wife or his king's wife that is a picture of a man stealing God's church and that's exactly what Paul did and if you go to first Corinthians chapter 5 you'll see that Paul had a situation where a man had his own father's wife in the church. This was a picture of him. Okay. Paul was being mocked on everything he brought out. That's why I'm going back through the Bible and I'm learning so many amazing truths. God mocked Paul. Okay. He was the man that stole his father's church. He was the thief that Jesus warned his disciples about that would come out of the wilderness. Okay. Doing miracles. Who's been doing miracles? The church ain't doing miracles today. The church is faking miracles. Paul was doing miracles, but Paul was the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus warned us about. Let me tell you something. The horse and his rider has been sunk in the Red Sea. And there's coming a day that Jesus is going to come out of that well, just like Jonah came out of that well, and he is going to preach that preaching that his father bids. Okay? And he is going to destroy the cross. He's going to destroy Christianity. He's going to tip over the pillars like Samson. He's going to push those pillars from the left and the right just like a cross and he's going to destroy the cross. So I just wanted to put that out there. I recommend that you watch the video or rather listen 
to the video entitled Sign of Jonah. I went over that in detail about Jonah and the well and Paul and Jesus. And I brought out all of the types and shadows in it. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. If you in those Christian cults, and I'm talking about Israelite camps too, because y'all all believe in the letters of Paul. Y'all all believe in him. Okay. I recommend that you come out of there because let me tell you something, that building is going to collapse. It's just going to be like the Twin Towers. You know, when the Arabs hit the Twin Towers, okay, it's going to collapse just like that. Christianity is going down. The house of Paul is getting weaker by the day. Yes, the house of Saul is getting weaker by the day. But the house of David, and that is Islam, is growing stronger and stronger by the day. My brothers, let's celebrate Ramadan and Assalamu alaikum. All praises is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.